In spite of General Shepard's death, the fate of the Shadow Company remains undecided. His body is later recovered and laid to rest in the Arlington National Cemetery. Captains Jonathan Price and Stone McTavish, Earl of Nikolai, are labeled as international fugitive for war crimes and go into hiding in Himal Pradesh, India. Vladimir Makarov goes into the hiding as well as along with his terrorist cell, the Inner Circle. The heavy thumbing of the road is the little bird roars as the wind beats down against Soap's ears. Price and Nikolai lay so born to which dreaded instrument to the monastery in Bangladesh, India. Price urges the doctor to begin operating on Soap as soon as possible. Soap's blood spills on the floor and the doctor prepares to resituate him. Price warns Nikolai and his loyalists of Makarov's terror cell, the inner circle, coming to eliminate the remains of the Task Force 141, and Nikolai's loyalists. Nikolai hastily introduces the next best math specialist and Nikolai's command named Yuri. Just soon, an old international gunship crashes into the hospital and reveals the battle beneath the mountaintop village. Yuri and his loyalists push back the heavily armed support nationalists in the village, where they view mass killings of Indian civilians. After heavy fighting through the village, Price and Yuri arrived in an unmanned ground vehicle with thick armor plating, 20mm minigun, and grenade launcher. Yuri mans controls and pulls out a garage. UGB starts to mount the trash lists. Bullets tear through them and grenades wear out their ranks in seconds. Choppers appear to gun down the UGB. However, they fail and take flak as they are gunned down by Yuri. The UGB then protects the support chopper as Nikolai and Price carry soap into the chopper. An ultranationalist sweeper drone destroys the UGB, forcing Yuri to run to the chopper while avoiding missile strikes and Reaper drone. The Reaper then wrecks a bridge that Yuri crosses, making him fall down a slippery slope as the Reaper attempts to kill him by destroying a cliffside house. Yuri falls into the river and swims to land as Nikolai picks him up with soap and price. Sergeant Derek Frost Westbrook joins Sandman of the Delta Force in New York City in the middle of the Russo-American War. They are tasked with destroying a jamming tower on top of the New York Stock Exchange on Wall Street in an effort to regain air support. On the way there, however, an RPG cripples their Humvee, forcing them to travel on foot. The American flag flies strong as the heat of battle intensifies. They encounter multiple enemy Humvees and squads of ultra-nationalists. They make their way weaving through the short apartments and buildings. They reach a stock exchange after being ambushed by a Russian hind. Frost soon reaches the diamond tower, planting C4 on the tower and detonating it. The tower collapses and air support is regained throughout the city. The team is ambushed, however, across the street on surrounding rooftops against snipers. Frost uses her nearby Reaper drone to destroy the nearby rooftops. Evac Howard Black Hawk arrives just in time to extract the Delta Force off the roof. Frost mans the minigun on board and a helicopter flies down the street. The scene then shifts to an area world of apartment buildings and abandoned construction sites. Russian Hines appear and attack them. Frost comes in down with clear proficiency. The Delta Force soon arrives with an unfinished skyscraper and showdown versions with the Russian Hind. Bolts and missiles whiz past memes, equipment, and concrete. While helicopters are in heated battle until Frost is sure the Hind, as the Hind spins and crashes into the tail of Frost's helicopter. Pilots struggle to bring the bird back up as Frost and Yuri falls out of the crash of the helicopter. He grabs on as the incense he needed and using altitude in the cockpit rages on. Eventually, Frost climbs on and the pilots gain control. Delta Force escapes from Mexico to Manhattan, New York, towards New York Harbor, which leads into the mission Hunter Killer. Sergeant Derek Frost Westbrook and his squad are to infiltrate a Russian nuclear submarine and launch subs cruise missiles against the Russian fleet in conjunction with the Navy SEALs. They begin underwater in the flooded Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, amongst wrecked cars and dead bodies. The Delta Force travels through the tunnel via SDVs until Frost reaches a break in the tunnel. Sandman warns of mines being laid across the harbor. Frost and the team use their mind imaging sonar device to detect and avoid. They eventually reach a submarine, where Frost plants charges on the rudder of the submarine, damaging the hull and forcing the crew to surface, and allowing the Delta Force to breach a sub. He surfaces to see destroyed and cracked skyline of New York City. Frost and Sandman enter through the sub's access hatch. After clearing the hostiles, they reach a bridge. Two specialists breach and clear, killing everyone on board. Sandman obtains launch keys, and he and Frost input the launch codes against the Russian fleet. Frost and Sandman then escape from New York Harbor via motorboats as they watch cruise missiles launch. Wrecked destroyers and defeated carriers remain in the naval battlefield. He reaches the extract helicopter at the H-46C night and escape with the team as he views missiles flying in the air. Fighter jets passing by and the damaged skyscrapers that ever so represent New York City during World War III.
The slight hum of the fighter jets set the tone as we view Andrei Harkov, an FSO agent, escort the Russian president, Boris Forshevsky, down a government plane, transporting Russian delegates to a peace meeting in Hamburg, Germany, with the United States. Forshevsky meets with his daughter, Elena Forshevsky, and talks about peace with the United States. They walk into a conference room with major Russian officials about the peace treaty. The president argues with Vasily about the treaty, but they are cut short when shots of fire blow deck and inner circle insurgents in attempt to capture the president. Harkov and his commanding officer, Leonid Pudovkin, eliminate the insurgents and heads below deck to get the president to the safe room. The plane shifts incredibly, throwing both factions off balance. When they head downstairs, however, the plane enters a higher altitude, turning the battle into a zero gravity state. Harkov fires on the flying enemies with brutality. The plane then dives, attempting to make an emergency landing in Russia, bringing normal gravity back. Harkov and his allies reach cargo hold, where they reunite Elena Borshevsky and her father. The escort team moves forward towards the economy class, where they push back the remaining forces. Harkov is then pinned in the passenger seats, where he views a plane crash and fire, ripping through thick snow forests, destroying the local airport, and Harkov full conscious. Harkov gathers his senses and continues to escort the president to the evac chopper, eliminating inner circle assault vehicles and squads. Harkov and the president reach the chopper, but as Harkov opens the door, Vladimir Makarov makes his grand appearance and shoots Harkov. Makarov and his men kill off the remaining agent and subdue Borchevsky, demanding the launch codes for Russia's nuclear armory. Borchevsky denies giving the launch codes, but Makarov threatens to kill his daughter once she is captured. Harkov reaches for his pistol. Makarov notices who shoots Andrei Harkov in the head. Yuri, Price, and Soap discover mysterious trades between the African militia and the shipping corporation, Forgata, and Vladimir Makarov. They head to Sierra Leone to intercept further trades heading to Europe, fearing WMDs heading to England. As the birds chirp and the sun scorches, Yuri, Price, and the rejoined Soap McTavish rise from the mud and check their sniper rifles. They make their way past African militia patrolling the area with armed trucks and large squads. They reach a target village and Yuri provides sniper support from a nearby tower as the open price breach a processing house. It is revealed to be completely empty. The trio blow their cover and they head further into the village towards shipments. They battle hundreds of militia men in the slums using the unique architecture as tactical advantages. Yuri then mans an armed truck and fires an empty machine gun on a merciless attack from the of militia men. The weak and rusted sheet metal collapses and explosives the enemy beneath. Explosive threat for tops and entire squads of militia men. However, an enemy worker nearly kills Yuri and forces Yuri into a mad dash with the enemy force blowing the makeshift houses. They then escape and man the enemy mortars against enemy trucks, squads, and MG nests. They reach a marketplace and church, fighting against tons of militiamen and attacking hyenas. They breach a hostile church and prepare to breach through the package. The doors open and hyena pin Yuri as an enemy helicopter and the package escapes. Yuri kills a hyena and attempts to shoot down the helicopter, but fails, and watches the helicopter escape from the mysterious package. Meanwhile, we switch to Sergeant Marcus Burns of the SAS in London, England. He joins Sergeant Walcroft and his teammates to infiltrate a dockyard facility. A UAV scans the dock and sets a target for the SAS. It locates trucks labeled Charity Worldwide carrying suspicious packages. They reach the trucks, but the cover's blown and the SAS team go on action. The SAS team later learns the package is gone. They follow the retreating shipping workers to where from warehouses to construction sites, where support helicopters provide strafe and runs, eliminating enemies and destroying the surrounding environments. They approach a break in the construction site to land them underground. A runaway squad takes the truck and escapes during the firefight. They take trucks and give high-speed chase to the escape truck. Sergeant Burns enters the dark old transit tube in London Underground and finds a Russian truck with a high-priority package. Out of nowhere, a transit train enters the rail and fires on your team. The drivers of both SES trucks travel swiftly as they desperately try to avoid the opposite trains. They pass through civilian-occupied stations and enter their open-air traps to support helicopters flying on the hostile metro train. His squad mates attempt to take out the train driver, but they swerve into the train. The train leaves and completely goes off the track. The train flies in the air with destructive beauty. Barnes' truck shifts its balance and hits the ground, knocking out Burns. 
Burns awakes and views the aftermath of the subterranean crash. He finds Walcroft amongst the wreckage. Walcroft then takes Burns, the last remaining member of his squad, to the train station, eliminating hostiles within the tunnels and shops. As Walcroft and Burns exit the station towards the surface, the busy street of Downing Street emerges. The police barricade civilians and moves SES to prepare the roadblock. The charity World Ride truck drives down the towards the roadblock, and the SES gun the truck down to the ground. Minutes later, all the charity World Ride trucks stationed in Europe along the Civil Center Code, releasing gas and gas throughout Europe. are first identified as terrorist attacks, but reports from Air Force bases across Europe show a new kind of enemy, the Russian Armed Forces, who used a chemical attacks as a front to invade Europe. The failed invasion in the United States led Makarov to win over large numbers of major generals and politicians of the Russian Federation to take part in Makarov's massive military campaign and coup d'etat against President Boris Korshevsky. Vladimir Makarov had revitalized his Russia's war spirit that the death of the United States is still justified and makes Russia believe that the Warshevsky proposed peace treaty is an act against the people of Russia. Sergeant Derek Frost Westbrook views the devastation of World War III and Black Hawk in an all-out search and rescue mission for the Vice President of the United States, co-named Goldpost, and a counter-attack on the Russian forces occupying Hamburg, Germany. Via beach landing, armed with amphibious transport vehicles, escort aircraft, and black hawks with the counterattack on Russian forces. The carnage multiplies as thousands of bullets rain down on both factions and tank shells pierce through the air. The tank convoy encounters the apartment building separating the American from the vice president. The tank gunner is killed by a sniper, forcing Frost to man the minigun. The tank convoy enters the parking garage, encountering multiple squads of old chan bullets and armored Frost rains down on explosive rounds and the enemy's below him. Tanks run through offices and over cars to ramp the higher levels of the garage. The weight of the two tanks is too much for him. Come forward beneath Frost's tank, crashing down four floors. Cars above crash down the tank, pushing the tanks to the tracks. The Delta Force and the tank gunners move out on foot towards the Vice President's convoy. After heavy fighting through the streets of Hamburg, they reach the bullet ridden convoy with no Vice President in sight. They locate a blood trail leading from the convoy to an overrun building, where the Russians are keeping the Vice President hostage. Frost reaches the room, kills all the interrogators, and rescues the Vice President. A nearby V 22 Osprey evacuates the Delta Force and the Vice President intact. Nice. I guess the first round's on us. Price contacts Captain McMillan from Call of Duty 4, who is now General Commander of the 22nd SAS Regiment in Hereford, for information on Vladimir Makarov. The London chemical attacks have taken heavy losses against the British people, enabling the disavowed Task Force 101 to move in on Makarov. McMillan gives away General Moravi, an African warlord and drug boss operating Basasu, Somalia, who supplied Makarov and his terrorist cell, the Inner Circle, the chemical weapons used in initial invasion of Europe. The trio and Nikolai's loyalists invade Warabi's compound in Masaso, Somalia. After viewing a monitor sent for approaching, their jeeps kick in through the front gates and Nikolai provides overwatch from his hind gunship. Price pulls out his desert eagle and kills out the initial patrols at the gate. The compound is revealed to be a shipping dock, riddled with parts of dry dock, scrap ships, and large cargo carriers local for Gata. Armed enemy truck assault team ends gun down your allies and drops it from under the box. Nikolai enables Yuri remote control the turrets from Nikolai's time to soften up the resistance. The explosive rounds erupt from the gun and rain hell on your enemy below, taking out entire squads and destroying cars. The team succeeds in moving to Warabi's compound. Yuri breaches the office, guns down the hostiles, and captures General Warabi. The three of them put on gas masks and Price produces a poison gas canister, threatening Warabi to reveal his secrets about the chemical attacks and about Makarov. Warabi tells him about Viktor Volkristenko, Makarov's ball maker and the CEO of Fregata Industries, the shipping corporation. Price throws him a gas mask, only before shooting him in the head for the revenge of countless ACS who have died by his hand. The trio take off their gas masks and head to Nikolai's hind for extraction. As the team moves towards it, however, a sniper kills the loyalists and RPGs attempt to take out the hind. Nikolai flies away towards the secondary LZ. The oncoming sandstorm threatens the team to arrive at the secondary LZ in three minutes before the sandstorm destroys Nikolai's hind. 
Yuri fights vigorously alongside Soap and Price, battling armed trucks and explosive traps. They eliminate them and head towards secondary LZ, a construction building. A stray RPG takes down Nikolai's hind, spiraling out of control. He runs from the crash helicopter and slides down the rope, escaping from the crash helicopter. Sandstorm overwhelms both factions. The team avoids huge smashes of inertia heading towards Nikolai in the harsh storm. They reach the crash site and carry the injured Nikolai towards the jeeps. They jump along with Nikolai and escape from Sasso's small gun. Price informs Sandman, a longtime ally and fellow squad mate on Operation Cambridge, the intel covered from Murabi, Victor Volker Stenko, Makarov's bomb maker operating in the grass contaminated city of Paris, the GIGN, the Special Forces of France, was heavily affected by the chemical attacks, killing off nearly all of its operators at the headquarters of the Satorius. They also give a tip to the Delta Force, revealing Volk's location in Montmartre Hill, within heavy Russian territory. The Delta Force and the GIGN then take part in a joint operation to search and subdue Volk. A support helicopter carries the Delta Force and Sprott and Mel Team view the Eiffel Tower ruin and the of Paris filled with bodies, blood, and chemical gas. The helicopter lands on the roof of an apartment building, still dirty from the chemical attacks. The Delta Force makes radio contact with the downed GIGN squad in heavy Russian territory. The Delta Force moves down towards ground level where they are attacked from a local bookstore. Frost moves in and takes down the old Nationalist in the bookstore, so they meet up with the Jaijin and their officer, Saber. They make their way through the destroyed streets of Montmartre Hill, finding buildings burned from artillery and eliminating the Russian forces. The Delta Force then has access to an orbiting AC-130 via smoke grenades. Frost uses them on the enemy and heavy artillery shells gunned down the opposition. They make their way to a manhole where they enter the catacombs of Paris. When they reach the bottom, they confirm the clean air and take off their gas masks. A single light from Saber paves the way through the sewers and passageways. They soon reach a large burial site, which marks the entrance hole's hideout. The team is then ambushed, and they locate full running from the battle. They kill the defending Russians and follow Volk up to the basement levels of an office building. They enter from a world of grime through the vehicle ship to Paris, where they find Volk escaping in a sports car. The GIGN provide covering fire from the Ultra Nationals where the Delta Force gets in a nearby GIGN van to chase down Volk. They narrowly avoid attack with gunships and armed trucks protecting Volk. The truck swerves from tanks firing shells at them, just barely missing them. Frost fires upon the Ultra Nationals in return. They finally catch up with Volk, where they disable the car and smash it into a shipping crate. Sandman captures Volk from the wreckage and calls for an immediate extraction from Paris. Frost and his team approach a V-22 Osprey aircraft, tasked with extracting the Delta Force and Volk out of Paris. However, an RPG takes on the aircraft and crashes through countless cars and tears up the road, nearly killing Frost. We switch from an AC-130 TV operator, who guns down the oncoming helicopter, dropping troops, tanks, and mobile command centers surrounding the Delta Force at a large roundabout. The heavy artillery shells drop down the ultranationalists, until American fighter jets do a precision airstrike over the roundabout killing the Russians on sight. The Zelda Force moves to the street until they are pinned down in an embassy, but the AC-130 is under fire from enemy fighter jets, disabling air support temporarily. The AC-130 then covers the Delta Force as they make their way to assault Humvees heading towards extraction zone near the Eiffel Tower. The AC-130 takes down armed trucks and tanks attacking the Delta Force through wrecked buildings until they reach the same river where two gunships fire upon the Delta Force. Artillery shells take the gunships and the Humvees continue on the road until one of them crashes onto the Ponte Verena, the bridge across from the famous, wrecked, but still standing Eiffel Tower. The bridge is littered with wrecked cars, broken boats, and burning fires. The AC-130 fires heavy artillery shells at a tank on the bridge. Frost then exits the Humvee, equipped with an FJ FMJ-140 Javelin, and fires missiles at two tanks firing upon the Delta Force. The tanks explode and the Delta Force moves up, firing at the Ultra Nationalists until they reach the roadblock at the middle of the bridge. Frost uses smoke grenades from the AC-130 at the Ultra Nationalists, and he fires endlessly at countless enemy soldiers dropping in from the helicopters. Sandman calls in a massive ordnance airstrike at the other end of the bridge, taking out the whole of the Nationalists, but weakening the already damaged Eiffel Tower, bringing down the Iron Lady down to the Seine River. Blackhawks and Little Birds arrive to extract the Delta Forest with Volk out of Russian territory and out of Paris.